When released in late 1998, the Game Boy Color lacked one major feature, a backlight. It took almost two decades before we saw the first viable drop-in solution. Since then, there has been a proliferation of backlighting options and modifications for the Game Boy Color console. With that, welcome to part one of this five-part series, where we look at all the options available to us to make your Game Boy Color go from this to this. and welcome back to another episode of Retro Renew. My name is Tito, and today we're gonna to start part one of a five-part series where we talk about backlighting the Game Boy Color. If you're interested in restoring, repairing, or modifying retro game consoles, be sure to hit that subscribe button and the notification bell so you don't miss anything. Okay, it's really an amazing time in the handheld gaming community. There is no shortage for solutions to backlight your Game Boy Color, and it's also never been easier. In this series, I'm going to go over four solutions for backlighting your Game Boy Color introduced by three different creators. The first one is Benven, second is McWill, and the third is Midwest Embedded. There are several other options available online, but really I want to focus on the real innovators that really pioneered the backlighting uh, solution for the Game Boy Color. So in each video of this series, I'm going to show you how you actually do the modification to your Game Boy Color, as well as some tips and tricks that might make the install easier for you. Be sure to stay tuned all the way to the end of the video because at the end I'm going to discuss three important topics for each of these backlighting solutions. The first one is going to be the relative difficulty of the mod compared to the others. The second is going to be the cost. And third is going to be the functionality and general performance of each of these solutions. I'm hoping that this video series will help you become better informed if you're struggling with which backlighting solution that you want to pursue. All right, so with that out of the way, the first mod I'm going to go over is Ben Ben's Freckle Shack. The Freckle Shack is arguably the most popular backlight solution for the Game Boy Color, and it comes from a company called Ben Ben, based out of Australia. For this particular install that I'm going to go over, I'll actually be using a Boxy Pixel Game Boy Color aluminum shell. As with all of Boxy Pixel's products, a lot of attention went into the design of the Game Boy Color shell. The shell itself is actually a very flexible platform for backlighting your Game Boy Color. It can accommodate the AGS 101 screen, so you can do an AGS 101 mod. It can accommodate the Freckle Shack, which we're going to go over in this video. And it can also accommodate the McWill. Um, solution for backlighting the Game Boy Color. The only thing with the Freckle Shack and the McWill, you will need to purchase an additional 3D printed bracket that can be used so that it fits into the aluminum shell. I have links to all these products in the description below. In order to do this mod, you're going to need the following items. Please feel free to pause the screen so you can take note of them. Alright, once you've gathered all your tools and your parts, we can start the modification. With the Game Boy Color face down, remove the six tri-wing screws holding the rear shell housing to the front. Once the screws are removed, you can place the front housing to the side. We will now remove the RF shield from the rear housing, which we will reuse on the boxy pixel shell. You will need to remove the four Phillips head screws securing it to the rear housing. Once you're done, Place both the rear housing and the RF shield to the side. Now remove the three Phillips head screws securing the Game Boy Color motherboard to the front housing. Now 
Next, we will detach the LCD ribbon cable from the motherboard by sliding the retaining tabs on either side of the ribbon cable up. Once the cable has been released, gently remove it from the motherboard. You can now remove the motherboard from the front housing and set them both aside. Grab both your 3D printed battery housing bracket and your USB charging PCB. Secure the USB charging PCB to the 3D printed bracket using either Kapton tape or hot glue. In my case, I used a piece of Kapton tape. This will make it easier to handle later in the installation process. Next, we will trim the cart slot pins so that they are flush with the motherboard. Be sure to wear your safety glasses to protect your eyes from stray metal fragments. Now let's trim the small metal tabs on either side of the link cable connection port. This step is optional, but it'll make the fitment of the boxy pixel shell much easier. Next, we'll have to desolder both the positive and negative battery terminals from the motherboard. This is probably the most challenging part of the install. Heating the solder while pulling the battery terminals outward is how I remove them. In part two of the series, I'll show you a better way to remove these battery terminals, so please be on the lookout for that by subscribing and hitting the notification bell. Once the battery terminals are removed, you can give your button contacts a good clean using a toothbrush and some isopropyl alcohol. Now we need to cut two pieces of wire, each about two inches in length. In my case, I'm using 28 gauge wire. I cut a red and black colored wire to denote positive and negative respectively, but you don't have to. Be sure to strip both ends of each wire to prep it for soldering. For each battery terminal, there are two soldering points left behind from their removal. You can solder the wire to either one of these points. It makes no difference. Solder one end of the red wire to where we removed the positive battery terminal on top, then solder the black wire to where we removed the negative battery terminal on the bottom. Set aside the motherboard for now. Grab your front boxy pixel housing and place the Freckle Shack 3D printed LCD adapter bracket into the housing. Then let's place the Freckle Shack LCD into the bracket so we can make sure everything fits okay. Before we go further, place some Kapton tape on the back of the LCD housing just to be sure we won't have any electrical shorts once we put everything back together. Trim any excess tape from the LCD. Now place the LCD into the bracket once again, making sure to remove the protective film on the LCD screen. Now let's prep the Freckle Shack PCB by installing the included ribbon cable. When installing the ribbon cable, make sure the metallic connectors are facing up. Then secure the ribbon cable. Now we're going to connect the LCD to the PCB. Place the LCD ribbon cable into the locking connector on the PCB and lock it in place by flipping the securing tab down. Fold the PCB over so that it is lying on top of the LCD. For this install, I'm using the BoxyPixel aluminum buttons. They're awesome. Next, place the motherboard onto the front housing and connect the Freckle Shack ribbon cable. Make sure the motherboard is properly seated to the front housing. Grab the USB charging PCB with its bracket and place it on the motherboard as shown.
screw the bracket and the motherboard in place using the two Phillips screws provided with the box of pixel shell. Please note that you will not be reusing any screws from the original Game Boy Color. All screws used for this install are from the Boxy Pixel Kit, and they are all the same. Once secured, we can now attach the battery. Add some solder to all four pads on the USB PCB. Solder the positive wire to the lower solder pad, labeled OUT POSITIVE. Next, solder the negative wire to the upper solder pad, labeled OUT NEGATIVE. Before we solder the battery, make sure the Game Boy Color is switched off. Now solder the positive battery lead, the red wire, to the solder pad labeled B+. Then solder the negative battery lead, the black wire, to the solder pad labeled B negative. Now we're going to prep the rear housing shell. Let's start by attaching the RF shield using the four included Phillips screws. Now we're ready to button up the console. Place the lithium ion battery on top of the bracket, then secure the rear housing to the front. Once the shell is together, fasten it with the four remaining Phillips screws. Let's give it a quick test. Now the last thing to do is put the screen lens on. I'm using a specially designed one for the backlit Game Boy Color from a company called Bluish Squirrel. Another company called Jelly Belly Customs also sells a similar lens. I'll have links to both companies in the description below. All right, and there you have it. Wow, this is really an awesome looking Game Boy Color. Okay, so now I'm going to discuss how the Freckle Shack kind of did in three basic categories. The first one I'm going to go over is the modification difficulty, the second is the cost, and lastly it's the performance and functionality of the mod itself. For the difficulty, uh, this is actually a really simple mod to do. However, since I did use the Boxy Pixel kit um, in order to do this mod, it was a little more difficult because it obviously required some soldering for the lithium ion battery and the uh, charging PCB. For the cost, just buying the Freckle Shack itself is $65. Doing this with the Boxy Pixel shell will cost you about $180. And lastly, let's talk about the functionality. The actual Freckle Shack that I had is from an early batch, probably batch one or batch two. So it actually doesn't feature the ability to dim the screen. And what I mean by that is later versions of the Freckle Shack, I think batch, batch three or four and later, actually incorporated a little soldering pad on the PCB that you would solder a wire to the test pad for the select button on the Game Boy Color shell. So basically you'd be able to dim the screen by holding down the select button. While this version of the Freckle Shack did not include the ability to dim the screen, I'll be going over in part three of this series, a later version of the Freckle Shack, which does incorporate this feature. So make sure you hit that notification bell. That way you know when I release my episode and you'll be able to see a later version of the Freckle Shack that does include the ability to dim the LCD screen. With that said, I really hope you enjoyed part one of this series. If you did, please hit that like button. 
And if you're into retro gaming and retro game console modifications, please consider subscribing to this channel and be on the lookout for part two of the series where I go over the earliest backlight solution for the Game Boy Color, the AGS 101 mod.